So, um, what uh, what made you change your what made you change your life? Was it was it um, was it was it the prison time or the jail time or was it just something else? To be honest with you, um, like the first time I went to prison, you know, it was like I knew that I, I needed to do something different. You know, I just felt like um, it was time to do something legitimate. You know what I mean? Okay. And um, for people that know me from like back in the day, like um, I got out in two thousand three, and uh, before I got locked up, I used to be a uh, in a leaf and that's where i used to like really do a lot of my dirt and we used to like just mess around and like freestyle and rap and yeah. stuff like that and my boys used to always be like yo man you should you should go in the studio and record this and it'll work and you know when when you get in money and you live in a certain life and you you only one way you're closed minded you're like there's no way i'm gonna make it you know i still yeah. remember like i was jamming slim thug and swish house and all this stuff and so when i got locked up i was like yo i'm gonna try to do something different i'm gonna try to go legitimate yeah I was like, I'm gonna be a rapper, you know. I played around with it and it, it worked out. I, I was blessed, you know. what I mean, I had a single that that you know did a lot of noise in 2005, 2006 out here, and it, it went like um, global with it, you know. what I mean, it's dope. It's and it dope. worked out. That was like the first legitimate thing I did. And um, yeah, I saw time, your DVD of you touring online and yeah, stuff, definitely. and stuff like that. Live the hustle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I had my daughter, and you know, things just kind of like their priorities start to change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. You know, even though I had, like, my son before, I, I never got to be a part of his life. But my daughter was my first child that I was able to raise, you know. And, oh, okay. You know, I guess, like, it come a time when you start realizing, like, what's more important than what. And when you have to bring another or you're responsible for another being, especially when it wasn't their choice to be here. Yes. You know, you feel, um, you feel, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you just feel selfish, you know, if you're yeah. trying to live this life or, or trying to pursue this dream that could not possibly happen instead exactly. of making sure I feed her. So, you know, it, I had to go back to doing what I knew best, you know what I mean? And I went back to the streets, you know what I mean? And, and you know, it, it, it helped us to a certain point. Then I got jammed up again, you know what I mean? And it was just like something that you just had to keep, I just kept dealing with, you know yeah. what I mean? And it came to a point where I just, I'm not even gonna lie to you, like, you know, you hear, you hear most stories about ex-drug dealers that was like yo i had a turning point like you know yeah. i got busted and, and i they let me go like honestly bro like i didn't have that like three years ago in my mind i was like i'm gonna sell dope for the rest of my life it was what wow. i was good at you know what i mean it was too easy like when you really were deep in it you know you, you have access just like a person that's like been um in radio business for so long you have so many connects they're so yeah. easy to make money you feel me so I just really got blessed in my situation, man. There was no turning point. Like my my jeweler at the time, which was Iceman Nick, like which is my partner now. Like he just brought it up to me one day because I would like you know yeah. sideline deals here and there. Like I knew people from out of town so much, so I put plays together for him, and I guess he saw it in me before I saw it in myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he just brought it up to me one day, like yo, you know, you ever thought about being a jeweler? Okay, dope. And I, I, I'll never forget that because I'm like, hell no, nah, you know, because, bro, a jeweler, you got to have, like, family in it. You got to have experience. You gotta, That's what I always thought. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the truth because, you know, you got to have that plug, you know what yeah. I mean? No one's going to just pass it on to you, you know what I mean? But, bro, he, he saw some, and, and he literally put me out like I was his own people, bro, and, and – the rest is history, you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. You don't meet too many people that actually never, do. Bro. Never, you won't, like, never. Bro. Like, you, you won't. won't. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yo, I have money before, you know what I'm saying? I made good money when yeah. I was in the streets. But, you know, like, my daughter used to have to go to school and lie to people. Like, they'd be like, what do y'all do for a living? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she goes to a good-ass school, bro. You yeah. know, it's all doctors and lawyers. Yeah. And my dad's a rapper. Yeah. My dad's on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like. She was telling me, she was telling me um, that, you know, she. I was asking her, I said, you know, there's a misconception and she was in that, that that you always had money or you always came for money. And she said, no, we didn't always come for money. We didn't always have this <laughs> money. And my father worked very, very hard for yeah, it. And definitely. I feel like we deserve it. And I feel like that's that's a thing with a lot of, you know, I'm Asian, I'm a different type of Asian, but I feel like there's a lot of thing with a lot of immigrants is that, you know, um, you really have to go hard for the money and work really hard for the Definitely. money. I mean, my dad came here with eight dollars in his pocket and now lives in Sugarland, and mm. you know he's made some for himself. You know, Definitely. and it's just the way you gotta be.